everybody, welcome to another episode of Everyday Strong with Dr. Michael D. Daniels. This is your host, C.B. Baker. Thank you, Dr. Daniels, for uh, coming here. We're back at it again, and we got a great topic today, which I know is going to just basically uh, cause some controversy, but also make you think a little bit, like mm-hmm. a certain home said, make things that make you say, hmm. Mm-hmm. And so give the topic real quick. Well, and I will say things that something I hope will help people, you know, um, you know, when you think about our culture and, you know, we have been talking about racism and culture. When you think about our culture, you know, one of the things that permeates our culture is um, the difficulty of, 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 of black women to find what I would call real men, you, you know, a man that right. stands on his own, a man that understands what it really means to be the head not to be the boss, but to be the head, you know, to set the tone for where the, where the household is going and that kind of thing. And, and, and when I think about that, one of the things that I, I concern me is that if, if there's a problem finding real men, <clears throat> the question that we have to ask ourselves is why is that a problem? Because basically, it, you know, if you look at it from a, a business standpoint, if you look at a business model, it's usually supply and demand, you know? So, so why don't we have enough supply right. to meet the demand, you right. know? Because if you don't have enough supply to meet the demand, that means that people will take a substandard product. Mm-hmm. And I think that in many cases, that's what's happening in our communities, is that um, women tend to take a substandard product. You know, they take men who I don't consider to be real men. They may be male, but they're not what I would call real men. And so I just want us to talk about, you know, where does that come from? You know, what what causes that and what can we do to change that? Because if we don't, then we are really hurting ourselves as a community. Yeah. You know, the, the I often talk to my friends about this subject and I go I always reference back to what people see on TV. And, you know, when you watch TV, if you really sit back and look at it for us black men, they're treated so horrible on on television Mm -hmm. and if you watch reality tv they use the black woman to really demean the black man on television yes and there was one particular episode of real housewives of atlanta where people would know the character um well they were character but peter um nini said something to peter directly to Mm -hmm. peter Mm -hmm. and peter whose background is he's jamaican so Peter said something back to her and was fussing at her. Nene turns and says, what kind of man are you to fuss with another woman? Like, this is women business. Why are you in the middle of this? And Peter's looking like, you asked me a question. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to respond. Right. So it was weird how they portrayed him as being less of a man Mm -hmm. by conversing with women when actually he was being a man by you ask the man a question, a man will answer. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the, this this one of the very few things of examples I see a lot in society is men not being men because they don't know how to be men. Right. And it's so much, it's flipped so much now, it seems like, Dr. Daniels, that when you see a man be a man, it looks awkward. <laughs> well, you know, you're right. And, and the point you made, I think, is so well taken. It's almost like, you know, like, you know how when you, when you were a kid, your parents would say, this is a grown folk conversation. Right. So it's almost like the ladies were saying, this is a grown folk conversation. Right. You know, you don't need to get in it. And, and see, I, I think that there are two things that work there. There's a cultural, there's a cultural element uh, that w- as, at work, but also there is a, a um, I guess, a, a, a socioeconomic element at work. And this is why I say that. If you think about the, our history, you know, think about our history, and 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 when we when we come, when we come here, we come from a culture where male, men were dominant. You know, in Africa, men were dominant. And then you get here and we have been enslaved. Now, the, the slave master um, purposefully demean the man, mm-hmm. you know, to, to keep him down. Right. And if you think about, you know, for example, you know, the woman oftentimes was brought to the big house, you right. know, so she, she, could, she could look at the master face to face, you know, she could talk to the master face to face. 
you know, if, if she was walking down the street and a white man approached her, you know, she could look at him. But if a black man was walking down the street, he better look down, you know, and he better not look at a white woman. Right. Cause that was a hanging offense, right? right? And then if you go to the civil rights era, for example, if, if that, that same kind of uh, attitude was pervasive, if, 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 if a young man was, let's say, you know, locked up for something, right? His father couldn't go and beg the, the, the sheriff, but, but his wife, his mother could. Right. Because his mother probably washed clothes for the sheriff or, you know, or, you know, or, or, or did housework, you know, for some prominent white man. So right. she could do that. So culturally, you know, people have allowed or pushed the black woman up and, and tried to keep pushing the black man down. So as if culture, we, you know, we have that as, as, as an issue. Just like if, if you go to buy a car, let's say, you know, if, if I walk on a car lot, and this has happened to me many times, if I walk on a car lot to buy a car, the, the person will address my wife, not me. Mm -hmm. You know, as if I have nothing to do with buying the car. Right. It, it, you know, same thing when we bought our home. You know, they, they'll talk to her as if I'm not, you know, part of the transaction, you know. But she'll just tell them, you know, he's the one making the decision. He'd talk to him. Right. And if they don't approach me first, I walk away. I just say to them, well, you know, you talk to her, keep on talking to her, but I'm going to talk to somebody that talks to me. I move on. But so I'm just saying, culture, that's a problem. The other problem, I think, is socioeconomic. Because when you deal with households, where socially the man is missing, right? Mm -hmm. If the man is missing, we have to ask ourselves, why is the man missing? But also, what does that, how does that raise the next generation? And I look at, uh, uh, in, in my household, for example, you know, my, I'm, I'm the product of divorced parents, okay? My mother worked extremely hard to raise her family. She did a wonderful job. But I will say this, in, in all fairness and in all honesty, she treated her boys differently than she treated her girls. Okay, um, <clears throat> we had different responsibilities. Mm -hmm. um, my oldest sister had to be responsible for much more than we had to be responsible for. Right. My mother never asked me to cook a meal, right? But she asked my sister to cook a meal. What? What? Not that much difference in our age. My mother didn't ask me to babysit, but she asked my sister to babysit. You right. know, so she had the responsibilities. My sister couldn't stay out late at night, even though she was older than me. But right. I could. You know, right. those kind of things. Right. 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 So I'm just, just saying, when, when a, and my mother, you know, I don't know why she felt that way, but when she did that, what it kind of helped you do is to feel like that it's okay for a woman to take care of you. You know, because if, if, if I've never had to fix my sister's plate, right? but she's had to fix my plate. You mm -hmm. know, I've never had to make up her bed, but she's had to make up my bed. And so if, if, if women treat their sons that way, you know, it, it kind of brings them up in that feeling like, you know, a woman should be babying me. You know, a woman should be you know, doing this for me and doing that for me. And so even though something in you says to be a man, you still look for somebody who's going to mother you. And I think a lot of guys, you know, even though they may be macho, they still look for a woman to mother them, you know, so to speak. And that's damaging. And so I think that we have to look at how can we help women understand that difference. And I think most women, if you've been through that, you saw it how in how you were treated. Yeah. But that don't mean you treated your children differently. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so I think we have to kind of look and say, how can we help them maneuver around that so that the next generation doesn't inherit a group of, I guess, men who are still boys, you know? Yeah, it, it really... You know how you, you're getting a conversation and a, and a woman will say, well, you don't understand because you're not a woman. Mm -hmm. and you know, you'll hear that. And then, but it, you cannot use the same line. Right. But that doesn't make it not true. So it's like, and I tell people, I said, well, you need to, where's his, where's his uncle's at? You know, where's mm -hmm. your, your male cousin's at? Mm -hmm. He's got to understand when when he's got to be a man like it's it's got to go through stages right like are you, what are you going to do in this first real heartbreak mm -hmm. right it's you know like how are you going to handle that right like i know that for my daughter when whenever she has her first real heartbreak mm -hmm. i'm going to defer mm -hmm. to my wife sherry mm -hmm. you know and, and i said i'll be the backup you know, tell me what I need to do mm -hmm. on the back end. Sure. You, you know, and 
So you, you just tell me what the, so the same thing with like now with my son, when he has his first breath, I was like, Sherry, I got it. Me and him gonna go take a ride. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'm gonna explain, you know, things to him. Sure. You know, based on the scenarios of the situation, have an open conversation with him mm-hmm. and everything. Like, now, I, I know most men who have daughters don't want, don't even want to have that open conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't. I, I'm, I'm. You, you want to protect them, That's right? What it's you like want. Yeah. I don't even want to even have the sex conversation with my daughter. Right, like I right. want her to be basically celibate to like 35 years old. Right. <laughs> so to me. But most men are like that, right. you know. So it's right. like it's understood. But Dr. Dales, what can we do to get the black community, where I see this happening a lot, mm-hmm. to come to grips with what is happening and recognizing that the both sides of the actions because even when the man's got to understand something's not completely right why am i acting like this why mm-hmm. like i i want to stand up for myself but why i keep getting knocked back down like mm-hmm. speaking up and then the the women saying okay why am i so angry mm-hmm. bitter um I'm trying to think of some other words to use towards men or towards the man and nothing has happened or right. expecting the worst, I should say, and when they're adults. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think a part of it is, well, let me say it this way. We can't go back, right? You know, we can't go back in the past, so we cannot change where we come from. I think we have to recognize that off the bat, you know. It's like um, there's a generation that is too late for, and we got to be realistic about that. You know, it's kind of like what, what, what happened if I, you can use a, 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 a parallel. Not quite the same, but just in general. The children of Israel, when they left Egypt land to go to the promised land, Mm -hmm. the whole generation, the Lord said, you got to die. He said, this this whole generation is not going to get in because your attitudes have already been set, been established, and you're not going to change because that's what's in you. It's the next generation we need to work on. That's why I think we have to come to terms with and just note that there is a generation that is just a done deal. They're not going to change. Now, so how do we look at the next generation? I think that, you know, grandmothers and mothers have to come to a realization, and that is that you cannot raise your son the way a man can raise your son or your grandson. And just that's just the fact of it, you know. And I'll give you a good example. I have a loving mother-in-law, very loving woman, very smart woman. You know, uh, you couldn't ask for a better mother-in-law. Uh, when it was time for my son to be potty trained, she said to me, he's too young. And I said, how is that? She said, because it, boys take longer to potty train than girls. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, that doesn't make sense to me. She said, that's because you don't understand how to potty train a child. Now, I did understand, because I seen my mother potty train my sister. But here's what I also understood, that I, used to watch my father, you know, when I was a little kid. Right. I would look at him in the bathroom. We have a one bathroom in the whole house. We had right. five kids in one bathroom. <laughs> right, right. So it ain't like, you know, everybody went to a separate bathroom. Right. So if, if, if your dad was in the bathroom, you had to go. You, I got to go, dad. Right, He'd right. be in there shaving. He said, well, come on in, right. you know. I watched him shave, right? If I, if I was in there taking a bath, he would just open the door, coming in, you know. If you got to let it go, he let it go, you know. Right. Just in, so you watched him. You, I watched my father, and I learned more from watching him than I did from him telling me. As a matter of fact, he never told me how to shave. Right. He never said, this is what you do, <laughs> right. you know, stroke against the grain. or stroke. Right. I just watched him. So I said, if that's happening, that's how I'll teach my son. Mm-hmm. So I would take Chad in the bathroom with me, my son, and he would just look at me. And then I put the pot right beside, the, you know, right. the toilet. And I would go, and he would just look at me, and next thing I know, he's pulling his pamper down. Right. Because he's trying to emulate me. Right. See, women try to potter train a boy by sitting him down. But that's not natural for a boy to urinate sitting down. Right. That's why it takes longer. But if they let, if they, and you can't emulate, he can't emulate the woman like he can a man. When you do it that way, he learns faster, and you know, he keeps on going. Women have to understand that about boys, is that the psyche of a male is not the same as the psyche of a woman. So therefore, I can't teach a boy how to be a man. 